After the success of 2015, obviously we would like to continue, yeah, continue in winning races and hopefully in winning the championship. But you cannot take anything for granted in that sport and certainly the competition is going to be very strong. All points are set to zero again, so we just need to do a good, good job. I think you can never rely on historic results. Of course, there is more confidence in the team. After we won that first championship in 2014, we approached 2015 with a different attitude. But you need to stay humble and you need to stay with your feet on the ground. All points are reset to zero. And this is why we are always skeptical about our own development curve. And uh, before, you know, there's the famous sentence, before the flag drops, uh, or when the flag drops, push it stops. And this is why in Melbourne, we are going to see where we are. The priorities for the team over the, over the winter were to increase and extract performance out of the power unit and out of the chassis and uh, to make it all fit together and because the regulations were stable it got more difficult, the slope slowed down uh, or leveled out a bit but uh, this is just the right challenge for the organization and for, for, all the, for all the people to extract the last bit of performance. Their fight was very challenging and interesting for us as a team. It is clear that if you put two competitive drivers in the same team and they have a shot at the championship, that it's not always going to be an easy ride. But we accept it and we understand that it is important uh, for all fans and spectators that we, we let them race and this is just what we did last year. They are very professional, they know that there is a big organization behind the team and a very powerful brand, so I wish it would, con it would continue like it did last year. Yeah, we are in a, in a very lucky and unlucky situation because we had we developed two juniors, Esteban and Pascal, and both of them were somehow called away into Formula One. Pascal got the seat in manner and needs to prove that he has the caliber of being a successful Formula One driver in a different team, in a smaller team with the right people, but it's going to be a different structure than at Mercedes. And Esteban, besides his role in DTM, he's going to be the third driver for Renault, do a couple of Fridays, do the testing, and that's the next step in his development. We are okay with um, changing regulations. I think on the power unit front, we are a bit more conservative. When the FAA decided to introduce the new physics engines, we deployed a large investment program. So it is clear that all four manufacturers will try to protect the investment and not go into straight into other regulations. On the chassis side, I think we need, um, or we look, we, we, we embrace new challenges as long as they make sense. I think it is important that the cars go quicker. That was the mandate of the strategy group. That overtaking uh, is still uh, happening like it is at the moment and that it's becoming more challenging for the drivers and these needs to, this needs to be uh, put into regulations and obviously um, that's not always easy. There's a couple of good news uh, happening this year. We, we just don't seem to talk about them so much in Formula One. First of all, Renault coming back into the sport as a full-fledged manufacturer team is great news. Haas, as an American team, entering the sport is great news as well and is hopefully going to increase the awareness of Formula One in the States. Coming back to Germany and finally being able to show our cars and our, our team in front of our home audience is mega. Going to Baku, where I've never been, is also quite, uh, quite interesting. And on top of that, 21 races, which are really going to knock us out uh, in terms of um, stress, is a challenge we are taking on, but definitely very difficult.